guys, it's Chessa with Checker. Happy New Year! Welcome to our What's New Live. Quilt shops from all over the world depend on Checker for the newest fabrics and notions. We know as shop owners your time is limited, but that it's also crucial for you to keep your shop fresh with new products. I'm assuming if you're tuning in today you already follow us on Facebook, but if that happens to not be the case, make sure you hit that like button. And you can even turn on notifications so you receive a reminder when we go live. It's always fun to see where you're watching from, so leave a comment with your shop name and location. If you can't watch it live, don't worry. If you're hearing this, that means you found the video anyway. It does stay on Facebook. We never delete it, so you can go back and watch it if you thought you saw something, you want to see it again, you didn't remember what it was. It's always going to be here. And to make ordering easy, there is a link in the description to just specifically the items being shown today. If you have a question or would like to take a second look at something, make sure you pop it in the comments and I will get that answered at the end. We are going to be changing the frequency of our What's New Lives to once a month until the first week of March. But don't worry, there's still lots of great ways to see what's new. We send a bi-weekly email on Mondays, or every other Monday bi-weekly, with just the newest items that have been added in the previous two weeks. You can also use the drop-down button on our website and sort newest to oldest. And of course, we are always posting on Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest, and YouTube. Don't forget about our Q&A at the end, plus our buyers are standing by to answer any questions you might have. I do have a special guest joining me later today to demo the newest 12 inch skinny pineapple trim tool from Creative Grids. It's the one and only Maria. You guys have seen her before. She's super excited to be here today, but I got some things I have to show you first. And this quilt behind me was made with that new tool, but we will get to that later. But I'd love to know in the comments what your favorite Creative Grids quilt ruler is. So make sure you drop that in there. There will be a giveaway announced at the end, so make sure you stay tuned. Hello to Kurtha from All About Quilting. Hello Tony from So Blessed. Hello Christy from Valley Quilts in Hamilton, Ohio. Hello to Janie from Norway. Hello to my mother, as always. Hi, Mom. <laughs> um, let's jump right in with the second edition of the Butterfly Quilt from Tula Pink. The pattern is essentially a sampler quilt made of many tra traditional different quilt blocks and arranged into a giant butterfly that is centered on a graphic chevron body. The new revised pattern has been updated and expanded to include your complete fabric guide so that you can replicate the cover quilt identically and that's also great then for making kits. Some of the pattern improvements include a larger layout and sewing diagrams, quilting diagrams, updated techniques, coloring pages, and two different body options while still being the same great pattern that you know and love. We also have a handful of new patterns from It's So Emma. Let's start with the new Set K stitch cards. We have a train. A sailboat, a car, and an airplane. So these are all modes of transportation. These finish 32 by 32. Up next is the Zurich quilt pattern. You can make this in a crib, a lap, a twin, and also as a queen. As you can see, there's nice color instructions on the inside, layout guide for different sizes, 
and your fabric requirements on the back. Next is Autumn Spice. This is another cross stitch pattern. You got your acorn. And a nice thing about these is they always have your suggested DMC colors on the back. Of course, you can use whatever color you'd like, but this is a good reference to get you started. The rest of these I have are all cross stitch as well. We have Vintage Housewife. So this one is nice and large, as you see. They're nice and big, easy to see. So that's Vintage Housewife, We're still on items from It's So Emma. Then I love this one, this is Farm Life. You got your little butts of your pig and your sheep and your cow, super fun. Again, your suggested DMC colors. <clears throat> and lastly, for patterns from It's So Emma, is Flea Market Baskets. Again, you got your nice key as well that's included. And then again, nice and large. Check out these adorable new Busy Bee sticky notes from Lori Holt. Try to hold them up high enough you can see them. Super fun. You just kind of will match all your other stuff you already have. And then this new Denim Daisy project bag. So, can I see it? partially, you know, it's mesh so you can kind of see through it, which is nice. You can kind of quickly glance and see if what you're looking for is already in your bag, packed up, ready to go. I have a few storage ideas from Artbin, so we're going to get started with the rotating vinyl storage tower. So I didn't put this together because I thought the picture on it was just so pretty and I didn't think I could duplicate it well enough. So this can hold up to 36 rolls of vinyl or really any type of craft paper. And I'm sure you guys are super creative and you could find other things to store in it. So this is an easy snap assembly product and it's super lightweight and it's sturdy. You have a nice rotating base so you can easily just spin it around and find what you're looking for. You don't have to dig through bins to find that color you're specifically needing. Um, it also has the space on the top where you can hold some extra things like maybe some pins or a little scissors and just a great way to keep all your stuff organized and in one place. So you guys already know about the Super Satchel but it got changed up a little bit. It now comes with seven bins and the lids are included this time. So you have the nice long rectangular one as well as the smaller, you get four of the large and three of the smaller size. So it being nice and clear, it's really easy to just glance, know you have what you need. And it's just a great way to keep it organized we were already all fighting over who's going to get this to organize their stuff in the office. So that was the super satchel. And lastly from Artbin is the needlework project bag. So this has a main compartment to organize yarns and any in process projects. There's buttons to tie the yarn around which prevent the yarn from falling back into the bag and safety pockets for scissors and there are removable dividers so you can customize it as you need. Did you see my cute little buddy hanging out back here? 
Well, this is from Embroider Buddy. There are five new designs that I'll go through and show you, and they're available in two different size options. So you can see the actual dimensions on our website, but let me kind of give you a visual of the two sizes. And let me tell you, these things are so soft. I just like want to snuggle up in them. They're so nice and soft. So what's really cool about these is that they have self-contained stuffing pods for the head and the belly. And you get to them by this hidden zipper in the back. So then you can just take it out and you get in there the head as well. You take it out. So that makes it super easy and convenient for hooping and your embroidery it would be super easy on your machine. It would make such a great gift. Chrissy gave one to her daughter and it's super cute. Well, you said it was a panda? Yeah. Yeah. So I just showed you the moose. We have this super cute unicorn. And we have the cat. Kind of makes me think of Pink Panther. And your dog, nice floppy ears. And your hippo. Aren't they so cute? They're so soft. So make sure you check them all out on checkerdisc.com. There are other designs as well, as well as some other products from Embroider Buddy. Mushies up here. Okay. Are you looking for a new block of the month? Check out the Aspiring Stars sampler quilt from Sew on the Go. This is a 12 month block of the month. It is also kind of doubles as a technique building series. Each one of your blocks kind of builds off of what you learned in the previous block. These are designed to master the Studio 180 design tools. Got everything you need. Good illustrations. And there's two different layout sizes, well designs, um, or two different settings, excuse me, is the proper term. Um, one's a 94 inch square and the other one's a 93 inch square. You have your fabric requirements on the back. You have everything you need to rock and roll. From Quilted Chusets, I have mixed metals. This is an intermediate pattern. It finishes at 54 by 66 inches. Then we have Bright Skies. This one's more of an advanced pattern, 56 by 70. Lumens, another advanced, that's 60 by 72 inches. And Mod Cabins is 16 and a half by 75 inches and it is an intermediate. As always, your requirements for your fabrics are on the back. You have, they have nice little check boxes. You can check off your steps as you go. Color, I enjoy when they have a coloring page. I think that's nice. You have the option to really see your creation come to life before you go ahead and you purchase all your fabric. And it just helps you get a better idea of what you're looking to do. Next, I have some from the Quilt Rambler. This is another set of patterns that use um, Studio 180 templates. We have Illuminated Journey. This is a 39 inch square. Fiesta Stars, 76 by 84. Wheels on the Bus. This is a nice little two-in-one. You get your table runner and your placemat instructions all in one. And light shine bright. This one is a 65 inch square. New from Kimberbell, you might have already seen our email, but I definitely want to talk about it. 
It is called Spring Showers. Kimberbell's Fresh and Fabulous 40 inch square quilt. It's gonna celebrate spring in all of its glory with your butterflies and blossoms and so much more. There's a little red wagon, there's flower pots, there's log cabins, and it's all right in the hoop. It's a breath of fresh air for every machine embroidery enthusiast. Uh, I just wanna make it known that this one will not have a sewing version. You just have the embroidery version. I wanted to make sure to point that out because I know they usually typically have both. Next are some patterns from Villa Rosa Designs. I've told you guys before how much I love these. They are front and back, they're laminated, and they're a nice little pocket size. They're super simple patterns. They're great if you're looking to just crank something out or if you're a beginner. So we have today's special. 2M, this one looks like a great one for big print fabrics that you're afraid if you cut up won't be showcased perfectly. October Sky, great for a panel. And Merry Trees. Like I said, it's just one page. You have everything right on the back here. And it's a nice coated cardstock kind of paper, so it's not going to get destroyed too easily. From Sew to Grow <coughs> is the Measure Up Multi Tool. Multi -tool. It is a must have in your sewing room. It's made in Australia from premium bamboo and has both imperial and metric measurements, making it easy for you to convert and measure distances. It is also great for your needle position guide for a seam gauge and straight edge. Um, you can use it as a hammer because you can press onto the wood. You can mark your hems and also as a quick reference guide. Let's say hello to a couple more people. Hello, Cindy from Bossy Embroidery. Hello, Tracy from So Thankful in New Mexico. Thanks for tuning in today. I hope everybody's having some nice weather. We are extremely windy and dull here today. Hello, Kathy. Happy New Year's to you as well. Hello, Carla from Quilts and Crazy in Clearwater, Florida. Lisa from LNC Fabrics in England. Uda from Germany, and Marsha at Cotton Pick and Quilt. Thanks so much for tuning in today, guys. I have one more pattern to show you before we jump into creative grids. And you guys know how much I love things that nest together. I think it's so great for storage and it's just fun. So I'm gonna take them all out so you can see them in all their glory. These, this is from Knot and Thread. This is called Hello Pouches. As you see, it has four sizes that you can make. Of course, if you just want a specific size, you can always make just that or a bunch of one size, or you can make all of them. You never know what you might need. So as you see, they have some see-through vinyl, so you can easily glance, make sure you have what you need in your package, but it is reinforced with that quilted um, base, so there's some stability there. And like I said, there's instructions to make all four so we're just gonna pop these back in there. Since we're getting ready for the Creative Grids part, let's see a couple people tuned in and told us what their favorite Creative Grids ruler is. If you missed that question, let us know in the comments what your favorite Creative Grids ruler is. Krista, she loves the left-handed rulers. We do too. We're glad everybody's super excited about them. And Inger, her favorite is the spider web ruler. Also, hello to Maureen in Canada. Sorry I missed you earlier, but I'm saying hi now. So now it's the moment you've all been waiting for. It's time to take a closer look at the new Creative Grids 12-inch Skinny Pineapple Trim Tool designed by Jean Ann Wright. Like I said earlier, we have special guest Maria DeGroote from Creative Grids, and she's gonna tell you all about this new tool and give you a quick demo. And then we're gonna go ahead 
and show you some of the beautiful companion patterns from Cut Loose Press. So I'm gonna get out of her way and let her run the show. <laughs> no pressure. <laughs> <laughs> well, hello everybody. It is lovely to be back again and it's really great to have a new ruler to show you. Like Chessa just showed you. Look at the size of this thing. It's so great. <clears throat> it is the newest addition to our pineapple trim tools from Jean Ann Wright, like Chessa told you. This one will do a six inch, a nine inch, and a 12 inch block. Technically, when you trim them, they'll measure six and a half by nine and a half by 12 and a half. So you get that great variety within this one ruler. I want to show you the different size blocks. <coughs> So here is the six and a half inch. And then here is the nine and a half inch. So you can see the six and a half has six rounds. One, two, three, four, five, six with those added corners. If I add four more rounds, I get the nine and a half inch. And if I add four more rounds to that, I get this lovely 12 and a half inch block. And that's what we used in the quilt that's behind me today. Am I not in center? Yeah. I'm getting the, <laughs> I'm not quite in view because this isn't my normal thing here. <laughs> Two more inches. Huh? Two more inches. Two more inches. There you said. go. How's that for a guess? Better? <laughs> <laughs> I guess I looked like I was off kilter a little bit, mm -hmm. huh? All right, <clears throat> so this is a perfect project to break in my new rotary cutter. This is coming out sometime in February. Thank you, Justin. And I, I want to give you my take on this rotary cutter. I normally do not like heavy handles because I have a little bit of, I don't know if it's arthritis or carpal tunnel in my wrist little stiffness in my fingers from all of the alterations that I used to do. But the weight of this and the way it's sitting in my hand, all that weight is tipping right down to the rotary mat. So when I trim, I am hardly putting any pressure on that handle as I work. I absolutely love this thing. I love the clearance that I get when I open that blade. I love that when I close it, I get this click to let me know. Did you hear that? I heard it. Maybe do it once more. Do one more. Click there and I know it's locked so that blade is safe. I also enjoy the fact that I just have to slide this with my thumb to replace the blade. That shank comes right out. Place the handle right back on and there we go. I love this rotary cutter and I think you're going to too once you get your hands on it. <coughs> so this new trim tool finishes to three quarters of an inch so even the smaller blocks are pretty dramatic. I made a couple of rounds to show you how easy it is to trim. Because I'm trimming I'm not worrying about all those threads and things that are on there. This one is up to round number nine which is an odd number. So on the tool I'm going to trim with this edge of the ruler for those odd numbered rounds. I'm going to lay it right on that seam line right here. Technically it's the round that happened before the round with the yellow and that's something that took me a while to keep straight when I first started using the trim tools but it is really wonderful. Open up my cutter, slide that right off of there. We had a few snaps in today, let's make that sound. <clears throat> Turn it, do the next side. Now when I look at this, I'm lining this white line up along the seam line, but I'm also looking at the dotted lines that run down the middle here. And they should line up with the first seam lines that you did from round one. like this. There's my click. Sometimes 
because I think I put it in there just right with my thumb and I don't hear the click, but it does stay sturdy. <clears throat> Another thing that I kind of keep an eye on as I'm working, you see the dotted lines for the seams here? They should be parallel to those seams while you're trimming those odd rounds. If they're off kilter a little bit, just give it a little adjustment because you want a square block when you get done. Maria, uh, Carolina Moore says that a spot on that would be awesome to be seen Ooh, and line up. It would, it would. If you and I, Carolina, I forgot to bring it in with me. If you put her spot on dot there, it's like a little magnifying glass that would show up there. I think Chesla's going to go grab one for I me. I am. Uh -huh. She says hi, by the way. Hello, Carolina. All right, so that is trimming of round number nine. Now you'll notice this is actually the strip I added for round nine, but it gets trimmed across this edge here to prep for the next set of strips, which will look like that. So there's that round. Here's the next round. I used my ABC pins, one, two, threes, to mark which round I was on, just because I put it down and I'm picking it back up again. So those are another great little tool to have. You've got a toy for me to add here. I <coughs> do. <laughs> All right. How's that, Carolina? She says, love you guys. <laughs> <laughs> we love you. All right. So I am trimming round 10. So I'm going to lay that right on top of one of the corners of my round 10 square. If you notice, this starts with round number two four, six, eight, ten, twelve, and fourteen. Every time you add a round, that centering square is a little bit further away from the corner of the ruler. But right now I'm going to trim round ten, so I'm going to aim for this square right there. Look how great you can see that. So my centering square is where it's supposed to be. I've got those white dotted lines that are following that seam line. And look at these black dotted lines are right on my seams here. So again, I'm going to open my ruler, or my ruler, <laughs> my rotary cutter. And I love this, these sets of rounds because I only have to move the ruler twice. So a little bit of pressure means it's not going to go anywhere. Trim both sides. There it is. Turn it around, center that centering square, dotted lines and dotted lines, and trim the last two edges. And if you need some confetti, you get lots of little pieces like this as you trim. Okay, so here's round 10. This means I've got a nine and a half inch block. I'm going to do one more step of trimming because I'm ready to finish the block. Go back to that white line along the 45 degree edge. Line it up on there. Using that little Carolina's dot there. And the R2 dot option. Yes. The smaller one it magnifies more. It's like like the op the what are the single glasses octa no oh I know what you're yeah I know what you're talking about <laughs> I want to close one eye and look through there a little bit straighter spectacles. so there you go spectacles spectacles there okay <laughs> so notice now I've got just this little bit to trim off and mostly the reason is because you want all of those layers to be the same width they finish to three quarters of an inch. If I didn't trim that, it's going to look a little awkward once you put the triangle on the corners. So we're going to clean that off too. This is a good project to do while you're catching up on one of your movie binges. Watch all of, I don't know, Pirates of the Caribbean or whatever your favorite thing to watch is. More quilting videos, I guess you could watch while you're doing this. <clears throat> it's a great project to use up scraps. I like to pre-cut my logs so that they're ready to just put on and I don't have to fight with long strings. 
You know, Jean Ann likes to use scraps and she trims them as she goes. All personal preference. All personal preference. That is so true. It's nice to have the option too. Very true. And I love the fact that it doesn't have to be an exact width when I'm cutting it. So maybe it's leftover pieces from a quilt or leftover pieces from a kit leftover jelly roll strips that you didn't use in the last project. You simply need a straight line to add on to that block and then you're going to trim and no one will know how wide your strip actually was when you got started. Perfect. Okay. <coughs> Put the dots back in their box for a minute. So now this block is ready for its corner triangle. So for this size, I'm going to cut them a three and a half inch square, and they're going to get sewn on like that. And you can see they're a little bit oversized, which is good because it's a trim tool. I need something to trim later. So I go back to the sewing machine, put them on randomly. <clears throat> None of the colors have to match, or if you're using all the same fabric for some reason, then it might be all reds, it might be all whites might be all blues and Jean Ann did some wonderful patterns for us so we're going to show you some of those options in just a minute but pretend that I sewed those on and that's what it's going to look like now personally I like to press that last seam open we recommend and in Jean Ann's instructions Every time you sew, you're going to press away from the center of the block so you can see all those seams are coming away from the center. But for some reason, in these corners, I like to press them open so when I'm adding block to block, it's a little easier for me to line up those seams. Again, it's one of those quilters' preferences. There is no set rule. You press them whatever way you want to. I like to do them open. So you can see, this is kind of a wonky shape yet, so I'm going to clean it up. I think you can see on the ruler here, this is the outline for the six and a half inch, six inch block. It's white and we've got a little line of grip all the way around. Here's the one for the nine inch block. So that's what I'm going to look at. I've got my edges lined up here. Here's the edge of that outline. I'm going to trim those ears off. Something very satisfying about cleaning up those corners when we're done. Maria, yes, uh, ma'am. Jean Ann Bray, she said, Thanks for pointing out that you don't have to pre cut. She <laughs> said, I never do. I'm a brown bag quilter. Pull out a scrap, sew it in place, and turn the side. She is. <laughs> And I admire that about her because I just can't quite do it. <laughs> <laughs> and you'll notice it's mostly triangle I trimmed off. There might be a little hair of the block that comes off at that final trimming, but look at how great that looks in the end. Ta-da! <laughs> There we go. All right. <clears throat> You're going to arrange those blocks as desired. Add your borders. Quilt it. Bind it. Enjoy it. And it's all going to be great fun. So now, with the addition of the 12-inch Skinny Pineapple Trim Tool, you now have three choices from Creative Grits. The Jaw 3 Mini, which looks like this, finishes the strips finished half an inch. Look at how close those dotted lines are right there. And this one has options too, four, five, or six inch blocks. The Jaw 12, which is our new one, finishes to three quarters of an inch with the choice of six, nine, and 12 inch blocks. And the Jaw 3 finishes to a one inch strip with the choice again of a six, eight, or 10 inch block. So some of these we could mix and match because if you could start with a 6, add it to an 8, add it to a 10, etc., that would be kind of fun, right? And they're all Jean Ann's rulers. They are all Jean Ann's rulers. And another great feature about all of these, you'll see the picture of the blocks on there, as well as the size to cut 
the strips and the size to cut your center square to get started. So there's a lot of great info, a lot of helpful lines, a lot of helpful grip for trimming, which I absolutely love. There, instructions can always be found at creativegridsusa.com along with patterns and videos that go with each ruler. Chessa, please come back. And we also have the pretty ones that come with it. Oh, yes. Uh, we can show those off Should a little insert. bit. And the insert that comes with it. So the insert gives you a cutting list and it gives you the basic instructions on how to use the ruler. It is a great reference. If your dog happens to eat it or you lost it in a flood, go to that Creative Grid website and you can see all that stuff right up close. And it has that handy QR code on it. Absolutely. Absolutely. So you scan that QR code and it's going to take you right to the ruler on creativegridsusa.com. You're going to have your videos, all your companions, all that good stuff in one place. You got it. So Shall we show them some more pretty? Yes. We're going to show you some more pretty. We're going to start with um, behind us, actually, <laughs> that you guys have been looking at the whole time. We got pineapple smoothies. Maria actually sewed this one for us. <laughs> This one got a lot of a lot of uh, wear and tear. I tested the ruler before it was printed. I tested the ruler after it was printed, and then we made some blocks for the video on how to. And then it just needed to be put together and finished. So it's kind of fun. And it turned out fabulous. I love it. I love it. Um, it's an oversized throw. Mm -hmm. About 74 and a half inches. About when it's when it's finished. So. And it was 25 12 inch blocks. Yes. Five across, see all those centers, and five down. And it'll fit over your lap in the chair, so that's why I like that oversized throw because I'm not really short. I need a little bit more length <laughs> in my blanket. Okay. Um, and <coughs> she simply uh, used, oh, you used the same fabric for your odd, your odd numbered. Yes. Okay. Yes, the odd numbered rounds are the yellow. So starting with that center square, there's round number one, three, five, et cetera, as you go. You get that secondary design mm -hmm. when you put your blocks together. That's, that's really neat. That's the really cool thing about the pineapple block. Uh, they were often done in two different colors so that you could see that design rolling across the quilt. Super cool. Super cool. So next All up, right. we have pineapple puzzle. So this kind of has to do with how you were talking about doing two different sizes. Yep. These are from the same ruler. They are. But there's two different sizes. You got your 6 inch and your 12 inch. That kind of gives you the puzzle design. There are um, special markings on the tool that guarantee that um, your 6 inch block is trimmed to perfectly to six uh, and a half. They should all be the same when you're done if we did, if we followed the lines <laughs> right. <laughs> and you have that nice little fudge factor built in and that's yep. a big bonus. So this one is a great way to learn how to use the tool. You make a couple of the sixes and you get going, you're getting used to it, and then you move on to your 12 inch exactly. size. Exactly, exactly. Or you start with the big ones like I do and then, th then make the smaller ones. Back to that personal preference yeah, yeah. kind of thing. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> oh, I love this one. Game time. I love the effect that she got with the colors that she used. Look at how cool that is. So the idea kind of behind this is that you're using your team's colors, mm -hmm. your favorite sports team, and you're piecing a four catch for the center square, as you can see in here. Yep. Um, and you're just going to, the blocks, I mean the whole thing is the blocks are trimmed to the exact size. Right. It's, it's perfect. And she used blues for opposing corners and the oranges for opposing, and then when you turn them you get that rolling effect across the table runner. She even used two different colors of border and binding so you get that double look to it. Again, personal preference, use all the same binding if you want. No judgments there, but I do love how this turned out. And the borders and binding in this one are um, mitered, but if you have not yet mastered those skills like myself, <laughs> there are additional <laughs> directions for your traditional border and binding. Correct. So game day. Oh, I guess you were taking them, sorry. That's okay. <laughs> we're all in the same room, it's all good. Gumdrops. 
And I love the dot fabric here. I know. And then you got the little the dot you can see kind of faintly in the pastels. Mm -hmm. So gumdrops, this would be a perfect baby quilt. Um, you just cut a variety of pastel strips from fat quarters, or you can use, you know, Jeanne loves, use your scraps <laughs> and just piece it together. And you're just gonna do 24 six inch blocks and you're ready to rock and roll. We are. And she changed one thing here. If you notice how the color comes from the center out to the corner, in her corners she used that same white fabric from the odd numbered rounds. Right. And that gives a different look to that square that develops when you put them together. So that one simple little change, look how cool that looks. Yeah, and then you get another kind mm -hmm. of square here. It's like a frame. And it's all the same block. It is. It's crazy what color placement does. I know. <laughs> Very cool too. It is. And Jean Ann was kind enough to send us all of these so we could show them on Facebook. Yes. When we revealed you. the ruler, so we're really thrilled about that. Oh, this one's cool too. Pineapple surprise. <laughs> this, just like all the patterns we were showing you, uses the 12 inch skinny pineapple trim tool from Creative Grids, designed by Jean Ann Wright. It is going to cut a variety of strips from 10 inch squares to get that scrappy kind of look. Yep. Um, then you're just going to sew two of your 12 inch and two of your 6 inch together. She put some borders on it. And go together like yep. that. A little sashing in between and it frames those blocks nicely. Very nice. And then my favorite of the group. I really, really love you this. You want to talk about this one? I'll hold oh, well, it. Yeah. You're doing great. <laughs> I'll jump in if there's something that you missed. <laughs> I love the colors of this and I love how she used orange in the corners and in the centers. So this one is called Pineapple Pinwheels. Love the play on words here. Mm -hmm. And um, you obviously you're using your two favorite blocks, your pinwheels and pineapples. The pinwheels are created by piecing the corner triangles before the final block trim. Right. And when four blocks are sewn together, you get that secondary pinwheel magic. Very cool. So in the, the Cutlass Press pattern has that all laid out. Yep, and we're always available for questions if you get partway into a project and don't understand something. If I can't answer it, I've got Jean Ann's info and she can help me answer. But what a great variety that she came up with for this ruler and this is only to get started. We can't wait to see what other people do with them and we can't wait to hear your feedback and how much you love it when you get it in your hands. And that's going to bring us to the giveaway. Dun dun dun. So <coughs> to keep up with the theme we have going on, if I can take my giveaway sticky note off of this, <laughs> is we are going to give away a bundle that has all of the cut loose press patterns that we just showed you. And then, of course, Maria kindly donated the tool you need to make the patterns. So you're going to get all six patterns from Cutler's Press and the new Creative Grids 12-inch skinny pineapple trim tool. And it's easy to enter. There's just those two simple rules. You must be a Checker customer and you must be a member of Checker's private Facebook group. This giveaway will be posted on our private page a little bit later to enter. You simply put your shop name and location in the comments, plus you need to like the post. If you're not a member of our private Facebook group, man, are you missing out? <laughs> so you're going to want to join. You see a lot of good stuff there. <laughs> yeah, you see a lot of good stuff there. Um, so there is a link to that page or that group in the description as well. It might take you a day or two to get approved, but don't worry because you're going to have until 5 o'clock. Eastern Standard Time this coming Friday, January 7th to register to win this awesome giveaway. Um, Chrissy, do we have any questions out there? Um, just co no, just comments. We got um, some of your favorite rulers that people have commented about. Um, Patty had like the CGR 818. Um, Tony, the folded corner clipper. I oh, love that corner clipper. That's a great tool. Um, and Marsha, the ultimate flying geese ruler and all of the square uh, square up rulers. Oh, there you go. They're all great rulers. They, uh, well, and flying geese, 
are so simple with those rulers and they're so accurate when you get done. It's mm -hmm. really such endless possibilities. Well, and, and even the CGR 818, I mean an eight by an eight and a half by eighteen and a half ruler, you can cover a lot of fabric and it's very sturdy on the table. That eighteen inch link it's perfect for this mat we yeah, have here. It's really nice on that mid size mat. Great for travel and all of that, so we don't want to downplay the rectangles in favor of the trim tools, but I do have my favorites, I will admit. <laughs> and of course, the mats are just phenomenal. They're self healing. We have them in four different sizes. Um, the back side or the reverse side is meant to use in conjunction with the Strapology rulers Correct. by Boone and Erla in creative grids. So, between the mats, my favorite rotary cutter, the trim tools, the rulers. I am all set to create. <laughs> and like she said, I want to kind of reiterate how we talked about the weight of this thing mm -hmm. and how it might be when you first pick it up, you're like, ooh, that's a little heavy. heavy. But if you use it, I mean, you, I mean, you use it all the time and you I said it, it, actually, it really helps your arthritis. I, do. I have less pain in my wrist after cutting all of these blocks and all of their layers and all of that than I normally would with another cutter. But yeah, it's, it takes a little getting used to that feel of it and the way it sits in my hand. It's different than the other cutter I had been using. So I think you're going to love it. Yeah. So just keep that in mind when you get it. Uh, end of February, we're expecting yeah, them. That's when we're expecting them. So, um, Oh, you got a, Kathy is excited about the multi-size pineapple ruler. There you go. Hello, before we sign off, I'm just going to say hello to a couple more people. Okay. Hello to um, River Valley Fabrics and Karen of Sew and Love Fabric in Lindenville, Vermont. Hello, Catherine at CQE in Maryland. Jennifer of Sewing Creations in Kansas and Karen from Arkansas. Thanks so much for tuning in today, guys. We're going to go back and get back to our day jobs. <laughs> we wish we could be on Facebook all day long hanging out. Right. Um, if we happen to miss your question, <clears throat> we're always... We keep um, an eye on it so we can answer them later. For those yeah. that aren't able to tune into the live performance, it's nice that you can still see it for a while. We, we do actually have a kind of an important question. Okay. Um, Ina asked that the EU customers can purchase the cutter. The... CGR rotary cutter. That I, my my manager is saying yes. They, <laughs> can. Cool. they won't be able to purchase it from us in Creative Goods US, but they'll get it from their distributor in Europe. Okay. That's awesome. There we go. That's There's awesome. some questions I don't know how to answer just yet. I <laughs> give me a couple more months maybe. <laughs> um, and yeah, if you have any questions about anything Creative Grids, like I've said before, she's uh, just down the hallway, <laughs> so I know where to go and get her if you need something. Very true. Um, Very true. Thank you guys for watching. Just a reminder, we're going to go monthly for a little bit, so I'm going to see you back here on Wednesday, February 2nd, and we'll see about when we can drag Maria back out. Sounds good to me. All it's right. good to see everyone again. Bye. Thanks so much. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. <laughs>